Ultradent, the leader in minimally invasive endodontics. Dr. Dan Fisher, founder of Ultradent Products, states, Minimally invasive endodontics is paramount even for root canal instrumentation as removing as little tooth structure as possible allows us to maintain as much tooth strength as possible. It is from this philosophy that Ultradent has developed its endodontic product line. This step-by-step -step presentation will provide you with a simulated common endodontic case utilizing Ultradent's minimally invasive philosophy and the Telos hybrid file system. First and foremost, proper isolation is essential in endodontic procedures to protect the patient and to achieve a good outcome. Dermadam provides an excellent barrier due to its high elasticity and strength. The Dermadam frame, made of a malleable aluminum, can be easily adjusted and comfortably shaped to each patient's mouth. The EndoEase Access Burr Kit comes with a round burr and four unique high-speed access burrs, each designed to perform a specific role in safely creating pulp chamber access. Step one in the endodontic procedure is to gain access to the pulp chamber. The round carbide burr is used to quickly cut through the occlusal table of the tooth, exposing the pulp and pulp chamber. The remaining access burrs feature safe ended tips to minimize the risk of pulpal floor canal perforation or other damage. The acorn burrs, available in two sizes, are designed to remove dentin and enamel on the upstroke. This makes de roofing the pulp chamber and removing the pulp horns safe and easy. To identify difficult to find canal orifices, a quality caries indicator, such as SableSeq, can be beneficial. SableSeq's bold green color stands in stark contrast to pulp tissues and readily identifies the location of the canal orifice. Once the canals have been identified, the remaining access burrs are used. Next, the button burr can be used to remove interferences, smooth out the access wall, and begin the straight line access preparation. Finally, the rectifier burr safely slides into the canal orifice to finish a clean, straight line access. Once the canals are accessed, it's time to begin instrumenting to remove all infected and necrotic tissue while properly preparing the canal for obturation. As a continuation of the anatomic endodontic technology, Ultradent has developed the EndoEase Telos file system. The Telos Ready Pack contains everything you need to reach the apex and properly instrument 90% of your root canal cases. We will use the Telos Ready Pack file configuration in this procedure. This ready pack contains two stainless steel hand files for establishing patency and beginning to create a glide path, one stainless steel shaping file for cleaning the middle third of the canal to remove interferences and finalize a good glide path, and two nickel titanium files for transitioning through the apical third of the canal. To begin the cleaning and debriding process, start by measuring the length of the tooth using the endo ruler and the x-ray image. Select the appropriate ready pack file kit according to this measurement. The measurement should be taken from the tip of the cusp to the anatomical radiographic apex of the root. This will help to approximate the location of the apical foramen. The Telo sequence guide has been produced to identify which file and irrigants are used for each step of the treatment. As illustrated in the sequence guide, we will begin with the number 15 file. Notice it is used with Phiolese and Chlorosid. Using the number 15 stainless steel hand file, establish intercanal patency by taking the file to about one half to one millimeter short of the canal length or where the canal apical constriction is located. At this point, the use of an electronic apex locator will give another point to help to determine a precise working length for the canal. After locating the apical foramen and finalizing the working length, use a gentle watch winding motion to work the number 15 hand file until it is loose in the canal. A series of irrigants will be used to make sure that the canal is properly cleaned. Load a 5 milliliter syringe with chlorosid, 3% sodium hypochlorite, and place a 31 gauge navi tip with double side port on that syringe. 
This tip's small size allows for delivery into intricate canal spaces, while the closed end and double side ports minimize the risk of expressing the sodium hypochlorite beyond the apex. The Navi tips are color coded to match their length to the Telos Ready Pack that has been selected, so it is easy to know which tip to use during the procedure. Begin irrigation by completely filling the canal with chlorocid, being cautious not to express any irrigant beyond the apex. The canal should be properly lubricated by placing a small amount of filies to make instrumentation easier. From the indispense containers, fill a 1.2 milliliter syringe with a small amount of filies and place a 30 gauge navi tip on the syringe. Filies is considered a universal lubricant because it can be used in conjunction with any obturation method. Other common lubricants on the market contain peroxides, making them unsuitable for use with resin-based canal sealers. Place a small amount into the orifice of the canal. Notice the effervescent reaction when the filies mixes with the sodium hypochlorite. This aids in the cleaning of the canals. You are now ready to begin instrumentation of the middle third of the canal. Referring back to the sequence guide, we move from the number 15 hand file to the number 2 shaping file. Place the number 2 stainless steel shaping file into the Endo-E's Arios Contra Angle and set it to the working length using the adjustable head and endo ruler. This contra angle features a 30 degree reciprocating motion that allows instruments to follow the natural anatomy of the canal wall while greatly reducing the risk of file separation. Additionally, the unique chuck allows the files to be adjusted by plus and minus 4 millimeters, making preparation easier and file length consistent. Applying lateral pressure and a side-to-side -side brushing motion, gently clean the canal for approximately one minute cutting on the upstroke. You will notice how the file follows the natural shape of the canal rather than cutting a circle like many rotary instruments. The stainless steel alloy provides the rigidity needed for this portion of the instrumentation. Once you have finished instrumenting the middle third of the canal, evacuate the canal with a capillary tip and a lure vacuum adapter. Now fill the canal with chlorocid once again. It is not necessary to use more filies because it is usually needed more to begin instrumentation. Chlorocid will provide enough lubrication to finish the procedure. Again, following the sequence guide, move from the number 2 shaping file to the number 20 hand file. Using the gentle watch winding motion, take the number 20 stainless steel hand file to working length. The shaping file and the hand file are crucial steps for removing interferences in the middle third of the canal and creating a glide path for the safe use of the NITI transitional files. Once the number 20 hand file moves freely in the canal, you should reconfirm your working length with the electronic apex locator. Evacuate the canal and fill it with fresh chlorcid. Constant exchange of the irrigants will help remove dentinal mud and other debris from the canal. Repeated doses of chlorocid will help to break down all organic matter within the canal. Back to the sequence guide, change from the number 20 hand file to the .08 taper transitional file. Place the .08 taper NITI transitional file into the contra angle and set it to working length. Use a gentle, pecking, crown down motion to gradually transition the file through the apical third. It is not necessary to reach full working length with this file. Simply take it to the point of resistance and then stop. This file can also be used in a gentle sweeping lateral motion if greater taper is required. Evacuate the canal and refill with chlorcid. The last file used on the sequence guide is the .04 transitional file. Then repeat the previous step using the .04 taper NITI transitional file in the same manner. You should be able to safely reach the full working length with this file. NITI is the alloy used in this portion of the procedure because it possesses the flexibility that is often required to negotiate curves and reach the apical portion of the canal, especially with larger diameter files. At this point, you will have enlarged the canal to a number 25.04 taper. 
Ultradent believes that the safest and most accurate way to finish enlarging the apical opening is by using hand files. Use the telos nitai hand files to finish the apex of the canal. It is generally recommended that you enlarge the apex three to five sizes larger than your apical instrument, which was the first file that went to the apex with some resistance. Now that the instrumentation is finished, a final irrigation procedure will complete the cleaning and preparation of the canal for obturation. Load a 1.2 milliliter syringe with liquid EDTA 18% from the indispense syringe and attach a 30 gauge navi tip. Next, load a 1.2 milliliter syringe with concepsis, 2% chlorhexidine gluconate, and attach a 30 gauge navi tip. Fill the canal with the liquid EDTA 18% and allow this to soak for 30 to 60 seconds. Where chlorocid is ideal for removing organic matter from the canal, liquid EDTA will break down inorganic matter such as the smear layer and expose the dentinal tubules. Evacuate the canal. Now fill the canal with concepsis, chlorhexidine gluconate. Allow this to soak for 5 minutes. Studies have shown that a 5 minute soak with chlorhexidine will provide up to 10 weeks of antimicrobial protection in the canal. Evacuate one last time with the lure vacuum adapter to remove the concepsis from the canal and blot out the canals using one to two paper points. Because we will be sealing the canal with endores, it is not necessary to desiccate the canal. Leaving the canal slightly damp will provide the best environment for endores to penetrate into the tubules. We are now ready to move on to the obturation portion of the procedure. The endores system includes endores points, which are gutta percha points with a unique resin coating which allow the gutta percha to bond covalently to the endores sealer. Endores is the ideal canal sealer when apically delivered via a 29 gauge navi tip, eliminating gaps and voids. No pressure or heat is required. The sealer's hydrophilic feature will allow it to follow the residual moisture deep into the dentinal tubules and readily flow into intricate canal spaces and auxiliary canals. Because endores is completely biocompatible, any endores that may be inadvertently expressed beyond the apex will be metabolized by the body in 3 to 12 months. Begin the obturation process by trial fitting an endores point into the canal. This point should be measured and locked into cotton forceps at the pre-instrumented length. The size of the point will be determined by the last hand file used for apical enlargement. After gently sliding it to length, verify the fit by checking for a gentle tug back when removing the point. Lay the master cone aside while preparing the sealer. Now, remove the cap from the endores dual barrel syringe and discard it. Attach and lock a clear mixing tip onto the dual barrel syringe. Express a small amount of the resin sealer to confirm that both chemicals are flowing. Remove the plunger from a skinny syringe and place the endores mixing tip at the back of the skinny syringe. Gently express a few centimeters of endores into the skinny syringe. It is not necessary to completely fill the syringe. Next, attach a 29 gauge navi tip to the end of the brown skinny syringe. Leave the mixing tip on the dual barrel syringe of endores as a storage cap. The chemical will set in it, but the tip will be replaced during the next procedure. In order to reach the appropriate length in the canal, the color of navi tip chosen should match the color of ready pack used when instrumenting the canal. After making sure the navi tip was securely placed, put the plunger back into the skinny syringe and express the air from the syringe. You may wish to express a small amount of endores through the navi tip to confirm that it is flowing properly. Set the navi tip silicone stopper 2 to 3 millimeters short of the working length. Be sure the navi tip remains 2 to 3 millimeters shy of the apex and does not bind. Begin gently expressing endores into the canal. Do not force the material out. Keep the tip of the navi tip buried in endores as you backfill the canal to eliminate the formation of air bubbles or voids as the canal fills. Caution! Do not deliver endores into the canal if the navi tip fit is tight. 
Doing so may express endores beyond the apex. If endores is not flowing up the canal around the navi tip, stop delivering and check to see if the tip is clogged or that material is not being expressed past the apex. Do not use excessive force on the skinny syringe plunger to express material as this may push material past the apex. Stop filling the canal about one millimeter short of the canal orifice. There is no need to fill the pulp chamber with sealer as cleanup will be more difficult. At this point, you have up to 15 minutes of working time before the endores begins to polymerize. Place your pre-fitted endores master cone back into the canal and set it to the working length. If necessary, use an x-ray to confirm that the endores point has been fully seated at the apex. Add additional number 25 accessory points into the canal to fill the open space. Once you have confirmation that your gutta percha is properly placed, light cure the surface of the endores for 40 seconds. This will not fully polymerize the endores in the canal, but create a thin crust of set material that will act to prevent an oxygen inhibited layer from being present on the surface of the sealer. Endores should be completely polymerized in 30 minutes. Using a heated instrument or searing device, trim the excess gutta percha from the pulp chamber. For a faster set time, Endores Accelerator may be used to facilitate a 5-minute set. Endores Accelerator is an ideal way to move directly from obturation to a post-placement procedure without having to schedule a second appointment with your patient. When using Endores Accelerator, omit light curing the material and follow the subsequent steps. Please note that Endores Accelerator can be applied using either a pre-measured master cone or accessory points. Using cotton forceps, place an endores gutta percha point into the chemical. Please note, if you use accelerator on the master endores point, you will need to move quickly for radiographic confirmation as the accelerator will cause the endores to polymerize in less than five minutes. When using accessory points, use a minimum of two to three points to assure a rapid and complete set. Once you have placed all of the gutta percha points that you desire, replace the cap on the endores accelerator vial and dispose of the vial. After five minutes have elapsed, test the set of the sealer, then use a heated instrument or searing device to trim the excess gutta percha. When trimming the gutta percha, take care that you don't inadvertently dislodge the cones from the canal. To seal the pulp chamber, begin by cleaning the walls and floor of the pulp chamber with cotton pellets soaked in isopropyl alcohol. After the endores has set, sealing the floor of the pulp chamber is important to prevent coronal leakage. Etch the entire tooth structure inside the pulp chamber. Leave ultra etch for 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, rinse tooth thoroughly with copious amounts of water. Then, place your bonding agent of choice. A syringe-delivered bonding system such as PEAK makes this procedure quick and easy. Light cure the adhesive. Permaflow purple or another flowable resin should be used to seal the floor of the pulp chamber. The purple color of permaflow purple simplifies locating the canal access should future therapy be needed. This will help to prevent damage to the seal and pulpal floor. Permaflow purple can then be placed over each orifice of the entire pulpal floor. Be sure to clean excess permaflow purple from the chamber prior to light curing. Additional flowable or resin modified glass ionomer may be placed. Temporization of the coronal aspect of the tooth can then be achieved by placing cotton pellets and closing with a firm temporary cement such as ultratemp polycarboxylate temporary cement or ultratemp res. Throughout this procedure, we've demonstrated how effective, minimally invasive endodontics can be performed in a safe but efficient manner. By using the natural anatomy of the tooth as a guide, dentin is preserved, thus maintaining the strength of the natural tooth. Ultradense endodontic products solve everyday endodontic problems, giving you the ability to treat most endodontic cases with simplicity.